Okay, in this video we're going to be talking about how to draw the cyclohexane chair conformations and the chair flip. Obviously, cyclohexane is a six-membered ring. Remember that this is not benzene. All of these carbons are sp3 hybridized. So each of the six carbons has two hydrogens attached to it. The first thing we really need to learn how to do is to draw this chair conformation. So let's um, just investigate how we can how we can do that. So to draw the chair conformation, and this is a 3D representation of cyclohexane, we're first going to draw two parallel lines. And what you should notice is that the two lines I drew are slightly off-center, so the second line is not directly below it. After we draw those two lines, we're just going to draw two points, and then simply connect our carbons to those points. And there's a good representation of the chair. One thing we have to realize is we have to draw there's two chair conformations. So the first one that we drew, the first two lines I drew were pointing diagonally down. So in this next example I'm going to have them pointing diagonally up. So again I draw two parallel lines. The second one is going to start a little bit below. And let's just give ourselves a little more room to do this. So two parallel lines up, as such. Then two dots to connect. And then connect the carbons. And that's how we draw a good chair. One thing I want to point out is both of those chair conformations look good. A common mistake students do is they draw their first two lines parallel and come up with something like this. This is incorrect. When we get to the next part on drawing all of the bonds on each of the carbons, we're going to have difficulties if we draw the chair like this. So really what we want to do is make sure that we have this at an angle and those look good. So let's just do it one more time. Two parallel lines up, slightly off center. There's the first chair, the second one in the opposite direction. And those are two good examples. Okay, so what we need to do here is first look at cyclohexane. All right, We need to remember that, again, all of these carbons are sp3 hybridized, so each of these six carbons has two hydrogens on the carbon. And here we see a representation of that. And what I've done here is I've drawn all of the hydrogens in red that are wedges and coming out of the screen towards us and all of the hydrogens that are dashes are going away from us and are back behind the screen. Now a chair conformation is a 3D representation of the molecule and here we have sort of the main cyclohexane chain is flat within the screen. So before we can actually draw our cyclohexane in a 3D molecule we really need to rotate this molecule and bring this bottom face up towards us, rotating this top face back away from us. And when we do that, we get something like this. Again, so all I've done is rotated, I've um, basically rotated this so this front bottom part is now towards us, okay, and the back part is. Sorry, and the back part is away from us. So again, what we should notice is the red hydrogens that 
were pointed up are now up in this model and the blue hydrogens that were back are now down. So red hydrogens coming towards us are up, blue hydrogens that were back are now down. And that's really going to help us understand how to draw all the bonds in the chair conformation of cyclohexane. So let's draw cyclohexane. So again, I'm going to draw two parallel lines. Oh, let's do that in the right color. Two parallel lines. Again, slightly off-centered. Connect one side. And then connect the other. And let's draw the other conformer over here. Now my parallel lines are going to be going down to the right, up, and then down. Sorry, these are slightly different sizes. But let's investigate the hydrogens that are coming off. So the first thing I'm going to do is really draw the hydrogens in red. Again, these are the hydrogens that were towards us and are now up. So all our hydrogens in red are going to be up here. So the first thing we notice is when our carbon angle is up, sort of like a mountain, those hydrogens are going to be straight up and down as well. So we have three scenarios where that's the case. Here, here, and here. These hydrogens are called axial hydrogens. And the other set of hydrogens that are also going to be up are now not straight up, but are now angled. And there are three hydrogens that are red and then are up and angled. And those are shown here. Those three hydrogens that we just drew are called equatorial. So if we circle the hydrogens in orange, here are my three axial hydrogens pointing straight up. And then in green, I have my three red hydrogens pointing up that are equatorial. Let's look at our blue hydrogens. Again, we're going to have six blue hydrogens, three will be axial, three will be equatorial. And in this case, when our hydrogen bond angle is pointing down, that's where our axial bonds are pointing straight down. So here is a blue hydrogen that is down and axial, a blue hydrogen that is down and axial, and a blue hydrogen that is down and equatorial. We need to draw the other three blue hydrogens that are down. These are now equatorial. And you'll notice when you have a red axial hydrogen up, our blue hydrogen down is equatorial. Here when our red hydrogen was up and equatorial, our blue hydrogen was down and axial. So let me finish drawing in my equatorial hydrogens. And again, let's circle these. So we'll circle the blue down hydrogens that are axial first, axial, axial, and axial. And then we'll circle the equatorial hydrogens in green, 
equatorial, equatorial, and equatorial. So what we should notice here as we move around the chair, the hydrogen that's up is axial, then the hydrogen that is down is axial, red hydrogen up axial, blue hydrogen down axial, red hydrogen up axial. So hydrogen will switch from axial to equatorial to axial to equatorial to axial and then equatorial and then the same for the blue hydrogens. This blue hydrogen is down equatorial, down and axial, down and equatorial, down and axial, down and equatorial, down and axial. One of the most common mis student mistake that students make are with these hydrogens here and here. So what I want to do is just draw a little dashed line cutting this chair conformer in half. The axial bonds are pretty easy to draw. The hydrogens on the end are pretty easy to draw but students get confused with these two hydrogens here. And what we have to remember is that the three equatorial hydrogens on the right are pointing to the right and the three hydrogens that are equatorial on the left are pointing to the left. So this hydrogen here has to be pointing up and to the left and this hydrogen here has to be pointing down and to the right. And those are the equatorial positions. So let's do this again for the other chair conformer. And what we're going to see is that Anytime you draw a cyclohexane, there's actually two chair conformers. This undergoes something called a ring. So now let's look at an example when we have some st substituent groups coming off the cyclohexane. So the molecule drawn here would be cis, because the two methyl groups are on the same side, both dashes or both wedges. In this case, they're both wedges. This is cis 1,3 dimethyl cyclohexane cis 13 dimethylhexene and what we want to do is draw the proper chair conformations for this structure so let's draw in our chairs there's our first one that's going to be in equilibrium with the other chair conformer. So here are our two chair conformers. What we need to do now is really number our carbons. So this can be carbon 1, 2, and 3. And one important thing I want to note here is that we have to maintain if we're going clockwise in this 2D form we need to go clockwise in our 3D form. So here's 1, 2, 3 clockwise. We're going to number these carbons in the exact same way. And the reality is it doesn't matter where you start numbering just as long as you go clockwise. I always like to start numbering at the carbon that's furthest to the right. So we'll call that carbon 1, carbon 2, and carbon 3. And again, for the other chair conformer, we've got to do the same thing. What's important here in my numbering is again if I start numbering carbon 1 furthest to the right I need to again start numbering with carbon 1 furthest to the right so we'll call that 1 carbon 2 and carbon 3 so two things to point out first I pick the carbon furthest to the right as carbon 1 that's pointing up on the other chair conformer the carbon furthest to the right is also carbon 1 I went in a clockwise motion here, here, and here. So I have to, if I go clockwise, I need to be consistent on that. 
So now let's draw in our groups. So for the chair conformer, I'm only going to focus on carbons 1, 2, and 3. So I'm not going to draw in the hydrogens for 4, 5, and 6. You can if you want to, but you don't have to. Again, let's draw in the proper position. So at carbon 1, because it's angled up, axial is up, equatorial is down. Carbon 2, axial is down, equatorial is up. And carbon 3, axial is up, and equatorial is down. So I've drawn that in the proper way. What I need to do now is draw in the methyls and the hydrogens. So we notice here that our methyl is a wedge, which means it's coming towards us. But when you draw in a 2D model, that means it's up. So my methyl group is going to be up, which means that we have a hydrogen that here is back and not drawn. And that hydrogen is now down. Carbon 2, there are no substituent groups off that. These are both hydrogens. And then looking at carbon 3, again we see carbon 3, the methyl group, is towards us, which we consider up. So again here, the up position is axial. So let's draw in the axial hydrogen. And I'm just going to extend this line a little bit so it's easier to see. There's my methyl, and then my hydrogen is equatorial. Okay, so that's one chair conformer here. Let's look at the other chair conformer. Again, I'll draw in my lines. Now at carbon 1, up is equatorial, down is axial. Carbon 2, up is axial, down is equatorial. Again, notice how carbon 2, the equatorial position, is going to the right and 3 down is axial and up is equatorial going to the left. Again, the methyl on carbon 1 is up, up, and up. So we'll draw in our hydrogen. This is above the other one. There's our CH3. Obviously we have an H. At 2, again we have two hydrogens in both positions. And then at carbon 3, our methyl group is up, it's up in the chair conformer on the left, and it has to be up in the chair conformer on the right. And then our hydrogen is down. So when we do this correct, what we should notice is in the chair conformer on the left, these two methyl groups both happen to be axial. The key is that they're both up. Up here, up here. In this chair conformer, they're both up and axial. When we do a chair flip, those substituent groups switch. So at carbon 1, the methyl group was up and axial. On carbon 2, it's now up and equatorial. And the same thing for carbon 3. In the chair conformer, on the left, it is up. On the right, it is up and equatorial. So the last thing I want to point out, and I'm not going to go into great detail, is it turns out that these two chair conformers are not equal in energy. One of them is more stable than the other. And the conformer that's more stable is the one that has more groups or bigger groups that are equatorial. So a lot of times professors will ask which chair conformer is more stable and in this case, the answer is clearly the chair conformer on the right because the two methyl groups are equatorial. So in this video, I'm not going to go into great detail on why that exactly is. But all you really need to know, the take-home message is that the more groups or the larger groups want to be equatorial, that decreases strain and decreases the energy of the molecule, making it more stable. And in this case, it's clear the two methyl groups are axial and the conformer on the left and on the right they are equatorial. So if you ever have to figure out which one is more stable you just find the most groups or the largest groups being equatorial. So you can either choose one group is more stable than the other and sometimes there's examples where they both have the same stability.